Uh, hello, everybody. I'm uh, happy to start the session. So, um, I, I work in Radboud University, and uh, I work with the, within the big consortium of many partners on the Future TDM project. And uh, the main goal of Future TDM project is to reduce barriers and increase uptake in text and data mining for research environments using a collaborative knowledge and open information approach. And to give you a kind of an intro into the project before I start talking about the paper, I will play you a little video that we have. Hello, I'm an explorer. I'm a text and data miner. Mining digital content using computers brings me results in minutes, something that would have taken these guys days to do. So text and data mining can save us time, effort and resources. Text and data mining, TDM, leads to new discoveries in science, the arts, business and everywhere. Mining text and data could help us find cures for diseases faster, mitigate the effect of climate change, improve efficiency in the workplace, and better understand our cultural heritage. We can find new patterns and correlations across disciplines on an enormous scale. Because big data is not just data, it's a boundless source of knowledge. But I'm frustrated. Even though we have this great technology, even though I'm only wanting information that I have legal access to, I can't always get it. I, in fact all of us, need a way through, through the legal, technical, economic and organisational obstacle course. This is where Future TDM comes in. Future TDM brings together people working in the field of data analytics. We want to talk with you about your experience of TDM the issues, the challenges you face, the skills you need. This will fuel an online information hub. With your input and our expert analysis, Future TDM can turn barriers into solutions. Here you can find out about developments in TDM, collaborate with others, and tell the TDM community about your work. We need you in our Future TDM community to help us to help everyone. So get on board. project and uh, I'm here kind of very interested to get any insights uh, that you have because we are collecting the information from all the stakeholders in the field. Uh, so um, we, as, a, as it says in the videos, uh, you introduced uh, our, the topic, we, there are different barriers to tax and data mining and loads of them are legal, but uh, within this talk I'm not focusing on the legal because, well, that's not what the paper was about, because what we wanted to, when we started the project, what we wanted first to think about is the, uh, who are the players in the field, so, and we wanted to kind of reshape and look again at the whole framework of publishing, of content creation and content reuse, and uh, to have this text and data mining perspective, so, because we think that it's, impo it's important to uh, keep in mind that the data will be processed at some point and integrate this uh, into every step of uh, publishing. So um, again, why we are doing that, it's because it's super great to have all these great uh, libraries and repositories of content, but it's um, the amount of papers, the amount of content is tremendous. For example, if we go look even into the publications that are within small fields like computer science, there are th uh, 300,000 papers that appear every year and it's close to impossible, of course, to go through all of them for a scientist um, or even for the group of scientists, you need some automatic processing. Like if you go to the medical field, it's even worse because there you have millions of also of papers and you need automatic uh, methods to process um, this data and so that you can base your research 
on the research that has been already done and so that you don't reinvent the wheel and that you have proper background and you have proper check that what has been done, what was successful or not, and then you improve the science forward. So uh, when we thought, we were thinking about, okay, so how, what can be our criteria for classifying, so who is who in the field and how do we look at the whole um, process of content creation um, in academic publishing? Um, so we thought about like three axes that we have to go along because, yeah, okay, we have the types of stakeholders, so we have different actors in the field, but they can really take different roles because it's the same person is writing the paper, conducting the research, and then also creating some algorithms to probably process those papers and then, again, reuse the results. And um, then uh, in the course of life, I mean, this person may become part of the fund funders' communities of policy shapers, so it's really, uh, the same person uh, or the same institution can take different roles. And also there is another axis that um, there is public um, and non-profit organizations and industry and uh, pretty much these days they are involved at, uh, they are also taking all of these potential roles and they are um, being presented in all the types of the stakeholders. And uh, when we look at the actual circle of, uh, let's say, knowledge sharing in the uh, publishing, um, so we, of course, we, we start with the data providers because uh, we need the data, the publications, the content, uh, but it can be you know, all different type of um, publications. And then, uh, of course, we need the algorithms. We need somebody who is developing the processing techniques because that's what, uh, you know, makes these wheels turning and the whole engine working. And once we have both the data and the uh, algorithms, then the service providers um, put it together and actually uh, bring the results to the consumers uh, of the TDM techniques and the results. And within this framework, we also have, I mean, it's kind of within and on the, uh, on the same uh, on the same t at the same time, on the side, we have the policy shapers and funders, because so both policy shapers and funders they affect the the whole uh, process because well they de 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 uh, they decide uh, which research to fund, so you know which kind of algorithm in the way finally might be developed, and they affect uh, the. Uh, say publication schemes, so they affect the amount of data that will be available because, well, if they uh, force everybody to go open access or not. And, uh, well, also the funders kind of make a decision what, what services to fund and uh, so it's really, um, th there is like cent central activity of kind of uh, knowledge sharing, but then there are um, um, stakeholders on the side who are affecting the whole process. And uh, as I said, uh, basically the same people, the same institution can take those different roles. So the we think that the data providers, especially it was discussed here over those uh, two, three days of the workshop and the conference that it's not only say publishers and not only traditional publications, but those can be also the blogs on the web and the um, information that uh, is not, not probably not standard, but this is also information and it's information about research. And uh, also sometimes it's just the citizen science and citizens journalism, that's also all the data that uh, can be provided and used. Of course, the algorithms, it's more uh, unified, let's say, group because, well, the algorithms creation, uh, it depends on the scientists or like say scientists and practitioners. And when I say scientists, I don't mean only the academic scholars at the universities because uh, in, say for the uh, tax and data mining, lots of science is, is happening in the R&D departments of the industry. So it's lots of, uh, um, Lot of, lots of things are happening uh, within the industry uh, side. And then again, say for example, the libraries and the uh, publishers, they appear as service providers because, well, if they have the access to the algorithms and uh, they are the, um, they contain the information like the data centers, the repositories, they have the data. So they are the one that provide it to the users and the users are well, the research community. Well, the research community is actually present everywhere because the research community is writing the papers, creating algorithms and well, being involved in the uh, service um, 
um, service uh, creation. And of course, the research community uses the result and it goes in a circle again, so it's, it, it brings more publication and so on. Uh, so, of course, the policy shapers, I think it's, it's really important to kind of what we want to, it's also within the project, but we want to be sure of that everybody is aware that this, this technology exists and it really can be profitable to everybody because, well, for the, for the funders and policy shapers, if they uh, have the information that is based on processing large amount of data, they can get better understanding what's happening within the science and, you know, where to put the money or where maybe money is lacking and so there is not much going on. And, uh, well, and of course, um, uh, like industry is also present uh, within this circle because as a consumer and as an active um, actor in the, the whole knowledge creation uh, circle. So again, um, talking about why are we interested and why we are um, having this conversation and trying to talk about text and data mining with different types of communities, even if sometimes, well, maybe uh, it's not as... Um, widespread within the community to uh, be interested in that and think about potential use of uh, tax and data mining techniques is that because tax and data mining has lots of potential for the uh, for all the actors in the field and within the public uh, publishers and uh, the the whole uh, academic publishing scheme and framework because it's generally TDM can help to extract information and we are talking about specific information, so it's about some biomedical compound or some animals or some viruses, or it can give you an information about the general trends of what's going on. It also helps to summarize the information, so it's well, basically um, summarize that in this field that has been done or not. It's also, especially we are, uh, we are talking about say the European Union context and we have so many people speaking in different languages and writing and publishing the content also in different languages or even if they publish in English but they still might want to be able to search and issue say the queries in their own language and be able to find the uh, information in um, which is available even if it's not their native language so TDM uh, technologies uh, are helping with this because uh, like it's cross-lingual access to information it's part of the research it's what uh, it's being done and also there was lots of discussion here at the conference about impact measurement and even if some uh, uh, currently used metrics are not perfect yes but still uh, you cannot have measurements you know the, the factors without actually measuring stuff so you need uh, to mine the publications to mine the content and uh, of course you might think about how to diversify it so that to mine uh, publications to mind blogs to mind I don't know Twitter mentions uh, uh, but it's all comes uh, together into one model and that's uh, how we again can better understand what's going on in different fields of science and uh, what is the scientific output what is the scientific future and what's uh, what are we doing so that's basically <laughs> most of uh, what I wanted to say. So thank you very much for the attention. And if you have any questions, suggestions, ideas, so I'm very happy to hear about everything. And hopefully we will uh, be able to convey this information to the European Commission through our you know, deliverables and through our project. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. It's a good first uh, speak because uh, it sets the landscape for <laughs> TDM. So, any questions or remark on this presentation from the audience? Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Great vision. Um, do you have an idea um, how we could tra track great literature? You mentioned it, like uh, discussions of publications especially specific discussions, not just uh, mentions in, um, in press, but uh, annotations or some research based on research or I, I don't know, maybe some specific forums. So are you working already on this or maybe you have some vision or some idea? Well, within our project, we are kind of um, 
analyzing and exploring the field. So the project, the core uh, topic of the project is not to uh, develop the technology itself. So it's more the question to the actual practitioners or people who are focusing on the field. But in a way, uh, the stuff that is available on the web through blogs, it's easier to mine because at least there are no uh, copyright issues that much. So, because you know, you don't have the paywall of the publications being, uh, you know, already um, non open access. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's more technical question than the policy question. So, and so it's, it's easier to solve. Yeah, but I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not working myself on the, those solutions. So I can give you, I mean, I can hypothesize, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Indeed, that's about uh, hypothesis because at this moment, for example, uh, there is Google that have uh, actually because technically that's a very complex question. Uh, Google yeah. has access because they build on the engine and etc. But uh, almost no one else um, can mind or search through the or crawl through the web. So it's not so easy a uh, question from the technical perspective even. So as long as we are discussing this question on, for example, European Union level, mm -hmm. and from the perspective of science, uh, maybe, I, just an open question, maybe mm -hmm. uh, it makes sense to build, for example, as part of uh, open cloud, European Union open cl uh, cloud, mm -hmm. some engine or some, some tools that will actually make this uh, so instead of Google, let's just make a generic search, uh, some engines that will allow to track it. Well, basically, so if we're talking about <coughs> American companies, it's not only Google, like say Google Scholar or like Bing Health, Google, Microsoft Academics, I think it's called. Uh, so even Google has competition. But uh, within, uh, so European Union, so there are projects that are at least um, focusing on kind of making the one repository of what's going on, so what, uh, what are the tools, what are the sources of publications, so well, this is um, happening and uh, well, basically on the level of European Union the focus is that uh, it looks like based on, on the I mean, measurements which are probably not perfect but the measurements that you can make it looks like uh, European Union because of all the regulations on copyright is uh, kind of be getting more and more behind US and say China so the Asian region so uh, there, there is more focus now on just okay let's see what we have let's enlist what we have and then hopefully try to introduce at least one copyright policy and earn one TDM exception across all the countries. So that's already a big thing. So You see there are legal uh, implications. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we have a whole deliverable within the project. It's online already. So okay. if anybody interested, I can <laughs> give okay. you links. To okay. So thank you very much, Maria. Thank you.